Hey, I'm Jesse. Let's have a devotion. We are in Exodus chapter 19. We're going to do verses 23 through 25. So this one should be shorter. Sorry, I've had a lot to say about the last couple of devotions. This one will be a little bit quicker. Exodus 19, 23, Moses responded to the Lord, the people cannot come up Mount Sinai since you warned us, put a boundary around the mountain and consecrate it. And the Lord replied to him, go down and come back with Aaron, but the priests and the people must not break through to come up to the Lord or he will break out in anger against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them, so God has summoned Moses, speaking to him from the thunder in yesterday's devotion. And now in verse 23, Moses responds to the Lord. And then God replies, go, get, go down and come back with Aaron, but the priests and the people must not break through to come up to the Lord, or he will break out in anger against them. So when it says he in verse 24, God's referring to himself because he's giving Moses a message uh, a, a message to convey uh, to the priests and the people. And the thing I want to focus on is actually the, the, what might seem at least initially, rhetorically, the least impressive verse in this text. We have this encounter with God on the mountain, and we have this exchange between God and Moses. It's profound, right? But here's what, here's, here's what just enthralls me the most. Moses went down to the people and told them because Moses is now a messenger for God and he's bringing to the people the word of God. He's had a conversation with God and now he's conveying it, frankly, to us as we read Exodus. The initial recipients within earshot of Aaron as the word traveled through the large group of people, they were just the first of countless countless, perhaps hundreds of millions of people who would hear this and believe this and hear the word of the Lord. In fact, we see the beginnings of Scripture here. Moses wrote Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's why Jesus himself would refer to their collective Pentateuch as Moses. And this is how we get the book we're reading. This book tells you the story of how it came to be. God spoke to Moses. Moses comes down. That's important because he's gone up to encounter with God. Now he's coming down to explain it to us because what he's received is from above, from the holy. And he's coming down to you and me where we are sinful. He has been shown mercy by God. God put his hand there to keep Moses from dying just due to his proximity to the sheer holiness of the omnipotent God. And now Moses, in that encounter, shares with us exactly what God said. My friend, this is the Bible. This is how we get the Word of God. This is where, this is where the Bible came from. And this is what we at the Redemption Church are going verse by verse through. This is the, this is the basic medium by which revelational epistemology came to be. You absolutely cannot say there is no God. It's not possible to say it. It's not possible to say it and have any meaning because the only one who could make such a proclamation with any veracity is the one who has perfect, absolute, total knowledge of all things. And there is no such human. For crying out loud, the James Webb Space Telescope is redefining our understanding of the universe. We were so arrogant. It's like five minutes ago, things that we knew for certain. We're now like, well, that's not accurate. So I have great respect for the, you know, the largely atheistic scientific community as the James Webb Space Telescope. I love that name because a friend of mine named James Webb from elementary, middle, and high school who passed away of cancer uh, in 2004 is also named James Webb. So I like to think it's named after him. But as this James Webb Space Telescope totally kicks our tails, um, to the credit of the scientific community, they're admitting, okay, we were wrong about this. We were wrong about that. That ought to be humbling. That ought to be humbling to us. 
There were discoveries made by the Hubble Space Telescope that became the basis for some people's atheism. There are now discoveries by the James Webb Space Telescope that ought to humble us. We don't really know Jack. Who are we to make authoritative proclamations assuming absolute knowledge? The only way that you could be certain that anything that you know is true is to have absolute knowledge. Even if you had 99% of all the knowledge that there is, it is possible that the remaining 1% of intellectual dark matter completely reframes the remaining 99% or even contradicts it. And so even someone with 99%, even someone with 99.9%, .9%, even with someone, someone with 99.99% .99 of all the knowledge in the universe ought not have the audacity to so foolishly and frankly unethically try to make authoritative proclamations. Instead, Christianity is the only complete worldview. It's the only authoritative worldview because of this right here. God is the only one who has perfect, absolute, complete, and total knowledge. And in his omniscience, he, in the most loving use of the word imaginable, condescends to talk to us. God, the one who knows everything, wrote a book. And this is the source text for 100% of the teachings and writings of JCM and the Redemption Church. And every other Bible teaching church, actually Bible teaching church, it's a holy thing to hear from God and read his word. In the New Testament, Peter describes the process of divine inspiration for us. And he frames it with these words, above all. Okay, this is, this is like one of the most important things I'm ever going to say to you, writes Peter. You know this, no prophecy of scripture comes from the prophet's own interpretation. Because no prophecy ever came by the will of man. Instead, men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Moses comes down from an encounter with God and tells the people what God told him. Then Moses' successors and the biblical authors all, right, all of the prophets from Ezekiel through Malachi, Matthew and Mark. Peter himself, I believe, was the source for much of Luke's gospel. Paul, all the New Testament. This is where scripture comes from. The Holy Spirit of God condescending to sinful man. There's no more important book in the world than the one written by God. And so it's not with arrogance that we as Christians know that our faith is the one true faith and every other faith is a lie. It's not with arrogance that Christians know that we have the one absolute truth and atheists are forever self-condemned in their ignorance with their nihilism trying to make authoritative statements. That's self-defeating, right? It's not with arrogance it's with great humility because we're overwhelmed by the holiness, the omniscience, and the mercy of God. By the breath of God, we live, ask Adam. By the breath of God, Israel exists as a nation. Today, it's on the news. Whether we as America support them or not, they're going to survive, period. By the breath of God, the apostles were sent out, and now we have this word of God, by the breath of God, all scripture is inspired. This is why. It's not because we're smart. It's because God literally knows everything and he wrote a book.